His eyelids had been burned away. So that he could not close his eyes, and the light entered into his brain, searing. He could not turn his head, for blocks of fallen concrete pinned him down, and the steel rods projecting from their cores held his head in a vice. When these were gone, he could move again. He sat up. He was on the cement steps. A dandelion flowered by his hand, growing from a little cracked place in the steps. After a while he stood up, but as soon as he was on his feet he felt deathly sick and knew it was the radiation sickness. The door was only two feet from him, for the balloon bed, when inflated, half filled his room. He got to the door and opened it, and went through it. There stretched the endless linoleum corridor, heaving slightly up and down for miles, and far down it, very far, the men's room. He started out toward it, trying to hold onto the wall, but there was nothing to hold onto, and the wall turned into the floor. Easy now, easy there. The elevator guard's face was hanging above him like a paper lantern, pallid, fringed with graying hair. It's the radiation, he said. But Manny didn't seem to understand, saying only, take it easy. He was back on his bed in his room. You drunk? No. I on something? Sick. What you been taking? Couldn't find the fit, he said, meaning that he had been trying to lock the door through which the dreams came, but none of the keys had fit the lock. Medic's coming up from the fifteenth floor, Manny said faintly through the roar of breaking seas. He was floundering and trying to breathe. A stranger was sitting on his bed holding a hypodermic and looking at him. That did it, the stranger said. He's coming round. Feel like hell? Take it easy. You ought to feel like hell. Take all this at once? He displayed seven of the little plastifoil envelopes from the auto drug dispensary. Lousy mixture, barbiturates and dexygen. What were you trying to do to yourself? It was hard to breathe. But the sickness was gone, leaving only an awful weakness. <laughs>